On the railroad, we know things are big. Locomotives are upwards of 70 foot long and over 10 foot wide. Certain rail corridors can span the entire length of the North American continent, and one rail car can carry enough grain to feed a small city. But what's the biggest of the big? The mother of all rail equipment. I give you the Schnabel, a truly monstrous piece of machinery that looks wildly different from any other rail car out there. The biggest one, WECX801, has 72 wheels and spans over 230 feet end to end. There are smaller ones out there, like PTDX203, which only has 14 axles and is only 80 foot long, but that is still quite large. So, how would a rail car like this function? What kind of cargo would something like this carry? And why do we basically never see these rolling behemoths? The way these things work is really quite interesting. Schnabels are actually composed of two halves, each with its own giant lifting arm, which can pivot on the frame the wheels are attached to. When unloaded, the two halves connect, making for relatively easy transport. But when the car is carrying a load, it's split apart and the cargo is held in between the two lifting arms. Lots of times, the cargo acts as part of the rail car, but for cargo that can't bear a structural load like that, a giant floor or bridge is placed in between the two lifting arms of the schnabel, essentially turning it into an oversized low boy flat car. And sometimes, support structures are added to the top of the car just for some extra stabilization. Now, two-part schnabels ain't the only kind out there. Some of them really are just oversized low boy flat cars, and others have two giant beams that suspend the load in midair. However, those two types ain't very common, and if you ever see a schnabel, it'll most likely be the two-part variation. Another really cool thing about schnabels is that some of them can shift their cargo around through the use of hydraulic cylinders, and some can even move their cargo while in motion, albeit at very low speeds. But why would they need to do this? Well. Something that can be upwards of 300 foot long is going to maneuver a lot differently than something that's 70 foot long. For instance, there's going to be a lot more overhang than normal when taking a curve, so the cargo might need to be shifted any number of directions in order to avoid obstructions, such as trees, switch levers, trackside infrastructure, you name it. Another reason to shift cargo would be to maintain a proper center of gravity, so the whole thing doesn't tip over. WECX801, the largest schnabel of them all, can shift its cargo 40 inches laterally and 44 inches vertically. That's a ton of movement. It's also not uncommon for schnabels to carry loads upwards of a million pounds. And since the length of the car changes based on what it's carrying, this means that with the right cargo, some schnabels can be over 300 foot long when fully loaded. That's almost the length of a football field. One thing you may have noticed is that the larger schnabels have cabs, and most, if not all schnabels, are accompanied by cabooses. That's because it takes a whole team of people to operate these megalithic rail cars. Inside the cabs and cabooses, you've got operators and supervisors running the monitor in the schnabel. There also may or may not be a tool car with mechanics and welders thrown in the mix, so the schnabel and its cargo can quickly be serviced should something go wrong. The cabooses also serve as living quarters for the crew, since hauling a load can sometimes take up to a week or more. So, what would a schnabel carry? Actually, a better question would be, what wouldn't a schnabel carry? These things haul transformers, oil refinery cracking towers, generators, nuclear reactors, laboratory equipment, giant mobile mortars, and much more. Basically, if road routes ain't gonna work out and the cargo can't be shipped by boat, then there's a schnabel car waiting to transport it. When it comes to moving one of these massive rail cars, nothing is fast. They're limited to low speed simply because of their sheer size. For instance, 
The largest Schnabel has a max speed of 25 miles per hour empty and 15 miles per hour loaded. Of course, some can certainly go faster than others. The speed restrictions are going to vary based on the model of the car and what's being carried. For something as large as a Schnabel car, why are they practically unseen? Well, one of the big reasons is that there's less than 100 in the entire world. The most recent metrics show there's 31 in Europe, 30 in North America, 25 in Asia, and one in Australia. And most of the time, oversized cargo either ain't big enough or simply doesn't require a Schnabel, so they're only used in niche situations. When they ain't in use, they just sit on storage tracks waiting for their next job. It's also a pain in the neck to use them. There's a lot of planning and networking that has to be done before a Schnabel's ever even loaded. One of the biggest issues is picking an appropriate route so it don't crash into anything or derail. And once the Schnabel gets going, it can't go very fast, so that can hold up rail traffic. However, railroads continue to use them because it's a big profit. Another thing worth mentioning is that the railroads don't own the Schnabel cars. In North America at least, they're owned by private companies such as Westinghouse Electric Corporation or Emert International. All the railroad does is take them from point A to point B. If you're a rail fan, keep your eyes peeled for these rolling behemoths. They're usually only accompanied by cabooses and idler cars, and will most likely have a unique train symbol designating that it's a special load. Schnabel movements are few and far between, so consider yourself very lucky if you've ever seen one or get the opportunity to see one. Thanks for watching. If y'all enjoyed this video, consider checking out some other ones of mine. Also, maybe pass yourself by the merch shop. Anyways, till next time.